We are about to say the words of the well-known Piyut, liturgical poem, Unetane Tokef. The Piyut is framed by two statements of belief. Berosh Hashanah ikatevun uviyom tzom kippur yechatemun. On Rosh Hashanah, it will be inscribed, and on Yom Kippur, it will be sealed. And, utshuva, utfilah, utzdaka, ma'avidim et roa agzeda. Repentance, prayer, and tzdaka, justice, can avert the severity of the decree. This poem includes in its series of questions regarding the fate of each of us in the coming year. Who will live? Who will die? Whose death will be timely? And who will die young or too early? Who by fire? Who by drowning? Who by hunger? Who by plague? Who will be rich? And who will be poor? The list feels particularly close to home in this year of fires in the West, of hurricanes in the South, of worldwide plague, and of human-made injustice. This theology, this piyut, that seems to say that the end, at the end of these days of all, our fate will become sealed, is a hard one to grasp at any time, but especially this year. How can these terrors have been sealed into our fate? After all, did we not pray and fast and celebrate last year and still these fates have occurred? The Nativot Shalom, a contemporary Hasidic master, teaches us, in the name of Rabbi Yaakov Yosef of Polnoa, a different understanding of the idea that God writes our names in the book of our fate. He says, each of us write ourselves into whichever book we want. The idea that we have the choice to inscribe ourselves is quite different from the traditional idea that God chooses for us. Rabbi Yaakov Yosef of Polnoa is saying that our fate, our destiny is in our own hands. We choose how to live our lives. This sounds like a pretty obvious statement. Each of us makes the decision about how to live our life. But at the same time, this is a thought that is radically different from the traditional way that many people relate to the high holidays. Instead of praying that God will inscribe us in the book of life, we pray and do spiritual work so that we can write ourselves in the book of life and make the right choices. The final lines of Unetane Talk of Prayer says, Tshuva, repentance, return, Tfila, prayer, and Tzedaka, justice, can avert the severity of the decree. Even when we pray and fast and celebrate, terrors occur. So what can we do? What tools can avert the severity of the decree? We all, every one of us, have the power, these three powerful tools. Tshuva, Tfilah, Tzedakah. And we can choose to use these tools and we can choose to write ourselves into a book of our own design. A book of a meaningful life. Tshuva is the knowledge that change is possible. That there is no such a thing as it is what is. Tshuva is the knowledge and the belief that we can change and that others can change. That we actually have the power. Let us remember that our power will be key this November. Voting, especially this year, is an act of tshuva, of change. 
Let's make that a priority in the work ahead. Our power will be key this November. Tfilah, prayer, is a practice that allows each one of us to connect with oneself and with the divine. Prayer allows us to be able to know that we are not alone. Prayer is the worship of the heart, the outpouring of the soul, a matter of devotion, says Rabbi Abraham Joshua Herschel. A practice that gives us hope, that helps us to let go, that lets us cry and laugh, dance and jump and sit silently. It is a practice that connects us with our innermost self and with our community and allows us to articulate the fears and the joys of our soul. Sdaka, a word hard to translate into English from the root tzaddik, dalet, kuf, justice, which implies that, help, that the help we give to others, it's a matter of justice. It is what we must do. It is our duty, our responsibility. Sdaka is what reminds us to be human in a world that has lost its humanity. Repentance, prayer, and tzedakah, justice, can avert the severity of the decree. In a year that our eyes are more open to the injustices of racism in our country, I want us to recognize the name of the men and women of color who died who were killed for being humans of color. To cry out our commitment to their lives and to fight racism in all its forms. I share with you Anunetane Tokev in their name. Who shall die while jogging? Ahmad Arbery. Who shall die while relaxing in the comfort of their home? Botham Jean. Tatiana Jefferson, who shall die while seeking help after a car crash? Jonathan Farrell, Renisha McBride. Who shall die while holding a cell phone? Stefan Clark. Who shall die while decorating for a party? Claude Rees. Who shall die while leaving a party? Jordan Edwards, Sean Bell. Who shall die while enjoying music? Jordan Davis. Who shall die while selling music, trying to make a way out and away? Alton Sterling. Who shall die while sleeping? Hyanna Jones. Who shall die while worshiping the Lord, the Charleston Nine? Who shall die for a traffic violation, Sandra Bland? Who shall die while coming from the store, Mike Brown and Trevion Martin? Who shall die while playing cops and robbers, Tamir Rice? Who shall die while lawfully carrying a weapon, Philando Castile, Freddie Gray, who shall die while on the shoulder of the road with car problems, Corey Jones, Terence Crutcher, who shall die in the first hours of the new year, Oscar Grant, who shall die while shopping at Walmart, John Crawford, who shall die while cashing, cashing a check in peace, Yvonne Smallwood? Who shall die while reading a book in their own car, Keith Scott? Who shall die while taking a walk with her stepfather, Clifford Glover? Who shall die while reaching for their wallet, Amadou Diallo? Who shall die while running away? Walter Scott, who 
You shall die while asking a cop a question. Randy Evans. Who shall die but while begging for their life, while begging for their breath? Eric Garner and George Floyd. Who shall die by the effects of supremacy, greed, and apathy? Who by beast indeed?